Hello, hey, my name is Peter, and today we are going to, in this video sponsored by Squarespace, look at how to make this custom frame that I made. Peep that. You see there's some details there. In the previous video, I framed a drawing, and then I was like, hey, wait a second. I do custom drawings. Why not make a custom frame for my custom drawing? So I'm going to show you how to make the custom frame, at least how I did it. Still going through the process, and then of course make a drawing for the frame. And uh, but first, I want to show you a couple of things, a few things about me, okay, and about who I really am inside. I'm gonna show you a few portraits, a few self-portraits that may give you that closer look into. My insides? I don't know what I was trying to say here. That's why, look, words don't work, so I use pictures, okay? All right, so here I am just normally. This is me just uh, waving hey, like so. Here I am as a hot pie. Here I am as a shoe. Here I am as a TV remote. Here I am. This is me as a fragile sticker. This is me as a fingernail. me as an angry triangle, me as an eyeball. This is actually the only one I, did. I drew two versions of. The first version, I don't know, I didn't like as much, but there you go. Full transparency. This is me as a spool of cable or wire. It's a little bit open to interpretation. This is me as a metal stake or like a big nail. This is me as a, some sort of transportation vehicle, maybe a, a large bus or a sprinter van of some sort, like a, all right, that. This is me as a smiley face. That's it. All right. Thanks for looking at me today. <sighs> By the way, as far as getting yourself seen and people looking at you, if you want to have a little bit more control over how that works, especially when you think about people Googling anything related to you or what you're working on, go to Squarespace and they have website design, domain hosting and purchasing services, and go ahead and get your website set up there. Then maybe when people search for you, your website will be what pops up. It's easy to set up as well with all their pre-made templates, a wide variety of them, by the way, and they're all very nice, polished, professional looking. I like almost all of them. I wish I could use like 10 templates at once, but obviously that would be a little bit overwhelming. And then once you do choose a template, you can customize it as much as you please or are prepared to do. You can sit there and tweak it, move things around, drag and drop modules. It's really fun actually just building and setting up the website, much less making things to put in it. So go there. Squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Peter Draws for 10% off your first website or domain. Do domain. Okay, so about this custom frame I made, I want to walk you through a little bit of the process that I went through. And this is a very rough, you know, it's the first time I did it. So there could be refinements in the future. First of all, I used Illustrator to draw the designs on the shape of the, I, I measured the, the frame I was using to build off of. I used Illustrator to draw some vector shapes, and then I imported those vector shapes into Rhino, 
which is a 3D modeling program, and I extruded them all a little bit. There were some kind of hitches there. That part took a lot longer than I expected because in, in Illustrator, I didn't make all the shapes closed and is somehow not as clean as I meant to. And then I rearranged the shapes in Rhino so that they could fit onto a 3D modeling printer platter. And then I used a program called uh, Prusa Slicer, I think it's called, which came with my 3D printer to uh, this automatically, uh, you know, figures out how to slice and, and, and print the shapes I had made with a 3D modeling program. And uh, then I printed it and it took about five hours to print these. I just kind of did it overnight. I'm kind of afraid of printing stuff overnight. Like, I don't, I don't know if 3D printers can catch on fire, but I don't know. It's a little weird, but I did it anyways. And then I took these 3D printed pieces and I got some two-part epoxy because it was kind of weird, the idea of gluing plastic to metal, right? So I used two-part epoxy. I don't know. It might have been overkill, might have been underkill. I'm not sure, but it seemed to have worked. And I glued the pieces of frame to the frame, the, the, mod, the modified pieces, and then I used some black spray paint. Spray painted all black so it blended together and give it a coat or two, and it seemed to have worked pretty good. I like the result. Yeah. I think in the future, I would do a few things different. First of all, I don't know, the, the workflow can change a little bit. First of all, the workflow can change. I don't know if I need to go from Illustrator to Rhino. Maybe I can just draw in Rhino to start out with because Rhino has its own set of vector drawing tools with anchors and stuff for making nice little curves. Um, so I might just skip the Illustrator step and get comfortable drawing in Rhino, even though, you know, Rhino is not really designed as a drawing program, um, but it, it can do what I need it to do. And also I'm, I'm excited by this because if I get my workflow down good, I'm really excited by the, I think I could make very intricate and elaborate frames with this, very intricate and elaborate designs to put around other frames. Uh, th for this one, I was just kind of gluing it onto the front of the other frame I was using, but I could do it in the future on the front, on the sides as it balloons and grows out to the sides and on the, maybe, I don't know, all sorts of, there's so many options and possibilities. It's kind of fun. It was so cool to draw something on the computer, envision something. This way I was just kind of doodling with shapes. I didn't really, it's, it's a little bit in, not, not very cohesive or something. Maybe that's the word, but uh, it's so cool just to see it print it out and become a real thing and be able to sit there and hold this frame that I just kind of, it's like I, it's like I squeezed it out of my head. Like my head was a tube of toothpaste. I, usually I have ideas in my head and it's not so direct. It doesn't so directly become a physical object, right? But it did. And it was cool. And also in the future, I maybe, I don't know if this was the best paint. I mean, I, I use very high quality paint. Um, but it, it did chip kind of easily. Maybe I should use more coats or use a top coat, like a clear coat. Um, I think if I sell this, I will include like, I, I, I used a, a, what are those pens called? Um, I'm the only thinking of the word Prusa cause that's the name of the printer. Uh, wait, I have one around here somewhere. Oh yeah. Posca. Posca and Prusa, very closely similar words. I have a black Posca pen, which is a paint pen that I was using to, I touched up a couple of spots where the paint chipped off, but maybe that wouldn't happen if I also had a can of like clear coat to protect it. Right. Uh, so just a couple of things like that about the workflow, how to protect it, how to coat it. And, uh, I think it's cool. I like this idea of how it's not just about the drawing, the art, the frame can be part of it too. And I think next time I do this, I'll also draw maybe some little designs or dots, uh, maybe also draw a little bit on the mat. It might, I might not like that because the mat is that big barrier of white space between the drawing and the frame. And it's a powerful white space, right? There's a reason it's there, not just to make other things you know, smaller drawings and pieces of art fit in bigger frames. It's it's a powerful white space, but I don't know. It just calls to me. White space is for black lines. It's I want to draw in it. So I mean, it doesn't hurt to at least try it once at all. So maybe the next one I'll do that. No promises. I'm talking to myself here. I don't, I wouldn't promise you, uh, but I also wouldn't promise myself either. Something like that. It's just something that's bouncing around in my head. Um, I don't know. I like it. It worked good.
I like how this drawing turned out too. I'm still working with and having fun with uh, like having bigger, darker sections, sections of the drawing that are just pitch black with no detail, right? And because I went through a stage where, I, where there were sections of the drawing that were maybe pitch white, pitch white, is that a word? Plain white? Uh, and then I went through a stage where everything was just, I just put detail all over everything. And it was, the, the drawing was kind of flat. You can, if you put the same level of detail everywhere, the drawing just becomes kind of like a different shade of gray. If you blur your eyes a little bit, right? No contrast, no depth. So, I don't know. I'm still, I, I, that's, that's what keeps me going and keeps me entertained and, and excited about drawing is because I never feel like I'm near the end. There's always like a million more things I could figure out if I do a million more drawings. So, that's fun. And I don't know what else to say except that I'm, I'm growing my beard again right now, but uh, I don't know if anyone really cares. Or I don't know if I really care because I'll probably shave it tomorrow. Ugh. I just wish it would grow in evenly and it doesn't. That's what I learned last time I tried to grow it out. Also, my hair is growing out again right now. I also want to cut that, but I don't know. I just don't. It's just like a lot of work to go to the the barber. And my favorite part about going to the barber is when they wash your hair afterwards and they uh, give you like a, they, they shampoo your hair and give you like a little head massage. And I, maybe two times ago, I told the, the stylist, I was like, this is my favorite part. And she's like, it is a lot of people's favorite part. She, and I was like, and somehow I got her to tell me that she would, like there's a possibility that she would do the head massage part for much longer if I, if I would pay for it. Uh, but then I asked how much did I have to pay and she wouldn't straight up tell me like, I don't know, is it $10? Like how, is it $30? How much for the prolonged head massage? But then she said what, basically what she said was when you ring it up at the front, tell them you want a shave and a haircut and pay for that and then she'll do a haircut and a prolonged head massage but I, ha I had to ask for her specifically otherwise I would just get a shave and a haircut and I don't know I've never paid for a barber to shave my face and it also made sense more because during COVID times and even right now I think they don't even do shaving services because you have to wear a mask the whole time but I don't know that specific stylist name. I don't remember. So I can't even go ask for that service now. Maybe I can just call and ask, can I get the shave and the haircut? Wink, wink. You know, can I get the, the massage service? Does anyone there do that? I just want the head massage, please. I'll give anything. Touch me. All right, I got to go.